Hi, I'm Jeffrey DeSmit. I'm going to show you how to optimize vaccination appointment scheduling with our open source AI software. This will include dealing with challenges such as injecting the second dose in time, dealing with age restrictions, respecting vaccination center capacity, and of course, minimizing the travel distance for the people who need to get vaccinated. This is what we need to create, a vaccination uh, schedule. In this case, we're assigning Zara to, for, to get a vaccination on Monday the 8th of February at 9 o'clock. Otto gets one at 9.30, Noah gets one at 10 o'clock, and so forth. As you can see, we're scheduling not just Mondays, but also Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. In this case, the planning window is only five days. Um, we can inject in uh, three different vaccination centers and we have five lines in there in total. So the first vaccination center alpha has three lines, uh, line zero, one, and two. The beta vaccination center just has one line and the gamma center also just have one line. So that means we can actually inject five people in parallel as we are doing here. You can see that Ray is getting his vaccination at the same time as Zara do and these three other people. Uh, we have three vaccination types uh, in this uh, up to now, and of course more are coming, but right now we have the Pfizer, the Moderna and AstraZeneca vaccines being injected. Um, we want to make sure that people live close by their vaccination center. So here the circles are where the people live, and you can see the three big uh, vaccination centers here. Actually, the top right one is a big one and the other two are smaller. So the top one, one right one has three lines, while the other two just have one line. And you can see that also means that the top right one gets far more people assigned to it. This has a side effect that people who live over here, who are, are actually technically closer to the top uh, bottom uh, vaccination center, uh, we actually want to get them injected into the big one uh, so because that's more of efficient right, for everybody. Um, so uh, there might also be far more people to inject than uh, we have uh, doses of these vaccines, so we might actually have some people who are not assigned to um, uh, an appointment. And of course, we want to make sure these are the young people uh, because we want to prioritize the elderly first, right? So what are our goals? Well, our main goal is, of course, to end this pandemic as, as quickly as possible and to reopen the pubs. Right. And how do we do that? We do that by maximizing the vaccination throughput. So um, that means we don't want to waste vaccines. If we open a Pfizer bottle that contains six doses, we have four hours to inject those six doses into people. Right. So um, that we want to cluster, the, especially for the Pfizer case, the vaccinations together such that we don't waste vaccines. Um, we want to keep in mind the vaccination center capacity, uh, how many people we can uh, vaccinate at the same time, um, how many dosages of each vaccine they have available at a particular date uh, based on their, uh, you know, their dosages which are coming in and so forth. Um, we want to take into account the fact that some people need, as well, for most vaccines, people need a second shot. That second shot needs to be the same vaccine. If we injected somebody with Pfizer the first time, the second shot needs to be Pfizer again. We cannot switch vaccine types there. Um, we want to do that particular days later. So for example, in the Pfizer vaccine, that's 21 days later. In the Moderna vaccine, that's 28 days later. That's the ideal time to actually deliver that second shot. Uh, we want to prioritize the elderly and priority groups. This might, case, this might differ from country to country or from region to region. Whatever the case, whatever the government decides to do there, we want to make sure we respect that, those, those rules. And we want to minimize the uh, driving distance for all of the people to get to those vaccination centers. There's basically two techniques to do this. One is the ticket master approach and the other is the central allocation approach. In the ticket master approach, the user goes to an application and picks her favorite or his favorite appointment. In the central allocation approach, we give them an appointment uh, with our scheduler. Now, um, the ticket master approach, as it, uh, even though it seems quite user friendly, has a few major challenges. One is there's a high concurrency on a few spots, uh, literally thousands of people who want uh, maybe a handful of spots on, on that Monday morning shot to get that shot as quickly as possible. While they're looking at the spot, you need to log the spot, right? It's um, because you don't want to get them to go through a wizard and at the end, they don't actually get their spot because it's already booked by somebody else. 
Um, so it's far more difficult than um, selling concert tickets because every spot is unique and the ratio of people who want a spot versus the number of spots available is uh, far more detrimental. Um, the second problem there is it first is it fair to use a first in first out approach um, because people might not have access to the website at the time that the um, that the website goes open you can start reserving spots um, and in general it's far from optimal too based on traveling distance as as potentially also uh, the second shots injections as well as uh, the uh, not to waste vaccines. So in this video, I'm actually going to focus more on the central allocation approach or solely on the central allocation approach. Um, we have some challenges there, of course, too. It might be an inconvenient time, but we can actually solve that by dealing with rejections and calculations. If an appointment is rejected or canceled, we open it up again and we just reschedule it the next day um, before. Uh, and this is, of course, before we, uh, a couple of days or a couple of weeks before we actually uh, send out the schedule. Um, and um, furthermore, there's constraint optimization intelligence there. Let's take a look at the implementation. So um, for this implementation, I've of course used our OptaPlanner, which is an open source AI constraint solver uh, used across the globe for all kinds of planning problems, such as the vehicle routing problem, employee rostering, maintenance scheduling, task assignment, school timebling, timetabling and many more. Uh, I'm using this in combination with the Quarkus stack, which is an uh, open source Java stack or Kotlin stack to, um, to open, for example, REST interfaces uh, and connect to databases or all kinds of reactive streams and so forth. Um, and with that, I've built this application, uh, the um, Quarkus OptoPlanner vaccination scheduler quick start. And um, let's take a look what it does. So um, here I have all of the um, injections and the signs still, you can see, right? So, um, and we're going to assign these to these people which are not assigned to any of the uh, injections yet. And uh, when I click the solve button, these will get it signed. Now, before I do that, I want you to notice that some of the constraints are already automatically implemented. So for example, I'm making sure that we schedule uh, nothing but Pfizer injections in this uh, second line here, right? So that means that um, by pulling these, by clustering these together, we waste, we don't waste any Pfizer injections there, right? Um, sim uh, similarly, I'm taking into account the fact that, uh, based upon how many doses each of each vaccines um, they have available uh, at each of these vaccination centers. So for example, on Tuesday, I'm not scheduling any AstraZeneca injections because we don't have enough dosages but I am scheduling uh, two lines of Moderna because they have enough dosages for that. That's pretty straightforward. You simply look at what's available in stock on, or what's going to be available in stock on that particular day. And uh, that's what you create injection spots for. And as you see, we don't have any people assigned to these yet. Right. Now, um, for now, I've just enabled one constraint and that's to make sure that each person gets, a, gets assigned to exactly one injection. And this is a five day planning schedule, so there's no need to, to, in, to inject one person twice in this planning window. It's too short for that. Uh, when I click the solve button, which I do right now, you see that uh, OptiPlanner starts scheduling and it starts assigning these, uh, these people into these sh shots. Now, like I've said, I've just enabled one of the only one of the constraints. And you can see a couple of issues here already. Uh, the first one being that, um, for example, here Sue gets her second shot um, but her first shot was Moderna. Now, the second shot is actually Pfizer, as you can see. Uh, so that's that's a really bad idea, right? So uh, let's take a look at um, how we can actually uh, fix that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the constraints, which are, I've written here in Java. Um, but again, you can also write them in Kotlin or in other languages uh, that run into the JVM. But um, I'm going to here enable the second shot invalid vaccine constraint, which is just making sure that uh, the second shot is the same as the first shot. And we actually have a filter in case that's not the case. So let's take a look here. Let's refresh this. Here we go. We can see all of them are unassigned. We solve this. And this time we actually get a schedule where, uh, let's take a look here. You don't have anybody who's like Sue uh, actually gets 
the shot of uh, the same one as she was the first time. So actually here, I think this was the Sue. Uh, her this is her sh second shot. Um, she had her first shot was Moderna. Her second shot is also Moderna. There's no errors popping up here. Um, one thing we do notice is that in many cases um, it might be too soon. Like in here, in her case, it's three days too soon. Here it's two days too early, right? Um, sometimes it might be a few days too late, like this one, one day too late and so forth, right? So we want to optimize that too. So what are we going to do is we're going to go back to um, our constraints and we're going to, uh, first of all, make sure that the second shots are, well, let's first put them on the ideal date, right? So make sure they're on the ideal date, we do this. At the same time, let's also make sure that those second shots are assigned. As I've said earlier, if you actually look at the unassigned here, uh, we might actually have second shots which are not assigned. These get a priority. It's even more a higher priority than actually age in most cases, because um, we need to close down, you know, those people who have had their first shot. If 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 in this planning window they need to get their second shot, let's make sure that happens. Um, so um, I've, I'm going to enable this constraint too. So the second shots must be assigned and we want to aim them at the ideal date. So when we do a refresh and we start solving this, what we'll see now is that um, again, uh, each person is just assigned to one injection as before, uh, but also on top of that, um, we have, uh, when we look at the unassigned, we don't see anybody with a second shot anymore. So all the second shotters are actually assigned to an injection, get prioritized over the first shotters, basically. And we also get far more of them being on the ideal day, right? So most of these second shots, as you can see, are on the ideal. We still have a couple of cases where we can't actually do that. And, and you see, if we give Opto Planner a bit more time, it's finding better and better schedules until we start or stop solving to not do that. In, in this case, we still have 72 days where it's actually not the case where um, we uh, the, deviate from the ideal date, but in most of the cases we can actually do that. Why is that? Uh, well, because if the ideal date for, uh, let's say, in AstraZeneca what would be on Tuesday, there's no way uh, we can get that second shot happening on Tuesday because we simply don't have any inject, we, we don't plan to do any injections of AstraZeneca on this date, right? So there might be circumstances why you cannot do this. Okay. Um, let's go back to our uh, constraints and um, let's um, add one more. Um, yeah, if you look at the unassigned people, we can see some elderly people still here, the 78 years old, 60 years old, while at the same time we have in our schedule, we have people of uh, much younger ages here, 33, 23 being assigned. It's not a good thing um, or that's not something we want. Um, so let's enable this constraint. Uh, make sure that all of the older, older people are assigned. Okay, and of course, keep the, this one in, in there. So when we do refresh, everything is assigned. We start solving again. We start from scratch again. Um, and this time, OptoPlanner will take care that he assigns the elderly people uh, first. Uh, you can see it's still working through it. This is the medium constraint. Uh, but if we look through the unassigned now, what you will see is these are Typically younger people, we don't see anybody anymore here above the age of 40 or something like that. And that's simply because he's making sure that uh, these people are still assigned. You can still see some exceptions. If you give him more time to solve, he will fix this too. So we might actually still have a, a moment ago, I saw a 23 year old in there, um, but you'll see that those will actually go away as he solves longer. Uh, why do we st might still have them? Uh, well, here, this, uh, solve, stop it. Actually, this is normal. The 23 year old should be in here because it's his second shot, right? Um, you won't see any young people with their first shot in here. Like, go again, 23, but it's his second shot. So um, he needs to be in there, right? Okay, uh, what else do you want to do? Well, if we look at the map, we're going to, well, we see that we're basically telling people to go from the other side of the city all the way to this center, you know, people coming from this location going all the way to that center. Uh, that's not ideal, right? So we want to actually um, minimize the travel distance. So um, if you actually go to the to this over here and we minimize the distance cost and we add that too, we can go again, all right? Uh, we can start solving again. Um, and um, we'll see that OptoPlanner starts taking that into account too. So. 
Um, we're taking into account the, that the second shots are, uh, are the ideal date, are the correct vaccine, and um, the, the second shots are first assigned, are, you know, are definitely assigned. The elderly people are assigned before the younger people. Um, and now, of course, we, let's take a look at the map. So if we look at these at the map now, we can see uh, it's already much better. We still have a couple of exceptions like, oh, look, and if we give up the plan more time, he's actually working away these. Um, now, this is an interesting uh, challenge because if you say that younger, that older people need to be assigned um, before uh, uh, younger people, regardless of the distance of the vaccination centers, you might get some weird effects. Think about it. If uh, this area is full of elderly people, um, then you might actually start f pushing them towards this vaccination center while all of the maybe just 10 years younger people over here um, do not get scheduled at all. So there might, there, sometimes you want to do trade-offs. And with OptoPlanner you can do that. You can weight this. You can say, for example, I want to treat the people with the elderly people first, um, let's say one or two years, but I want to also weight that against the distance. So if the distance is more than, say, uh, 10 kilometers, 10 miles, uh, more than 100 kilometers, 100 miles, then um, I don't want I, that age difference. Uh, I want to ignore that, right? I, it's not a bad thing anymore. So we can add constraints like that if need be. Um, okay. Mm, and yes, as, as stated before, you can clearly see that based upon the capacity of the uh, vaccination centers, we will be sending people to not necessarily their closest location, but to the one that's best for uh, the entire population, right? Like these people over here, they're being sent to that center. But in general, this will actually reduce the overall traffic time for everybody. Because if these people actually schedule their appointments first and they all pick this lower left vaccination center, then people who actually live closer and then these people come into the system in the first in first out system and they start scheduling, um, they'll have to go to the other vaccination center because this one is full. And so we create a lot more traffic and a lot more, uh, a lot less, uh, 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 not, so, not so good of a schedule as it is right now. Okay. So thank you for listening. And if you want more information on OptoPlanner, please go to uh, www.optoplanner.org.